Hey, what's up, you wrestling fanatics? You're listening to the True Wrestling Podcast, episode 43. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm flying solo, and I'll be previewing the Penn State Northwestern match coming up this weekend. I'll also be live streaming some Power High School matches this weekend, so check back for coverage. I want to thank my sponsor, Adidas Wrestling. You can follow me at True Wrestler One or visit the website at true wrestling.com. This weekend, Penn State takes a swing through the Midwest and opens up at Illinois, which we previewed earlier and looks like they should blow out. But on Sunday, they go to Northwestern, and this could be a very interesting dual meet. Penn State comes in, probably the number two dual team in the country. Northwestern is between 15 and 20, but they are a bad matchup for Penn State. There's a lot of unknowns, so... This could be a wild ride for Penn State fans, and it could also be a huge upset for Northwestern fans if they're uh, paying attention. I'm sure they are. Um, Let's just jump right into it. Starting off at 125, we got Michael D'Agostino comes in around number 10 to 15 versus Brandon Meredith for Penn State. Um, We've talked about Meredith and which Meredith will show up and who he's going to be for the rest of the season. This is going to be a dogfight. You know, if you look at the common opponents, there's uh, uh, not a lot that can be inferred. It looks like, you know, D'Agostino has uh, better, you know, competition against some of these guys. But Meredith has some better results also. Um, And it's hard to tell things from losses. Who has a closer loss? To me, it's whether or not we see the the Meredith who beat Kolioko or not. Um, You know, he's a young guy, local guy for me out of ONJ. uh, Looking forward to seeing whether or not he can step up and be a point scorer. Um, And this could be a really pivotal match. If uh, Meredith does not win this match, Penn State's going to have to do something that the upper weights will get there. We'll talk about that a little later. Right now, it's a toss-up to me. Uh, It's a road trip. Uh, for Penn State. So I'm leaning that this is going to be D'Augustino. He has a tiny bit more experience than Meredith. You know, he's got his home, you know, uh, facility, and uh, he's not traveling to make weight. That's a bit of an edge. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I'd like to see Meredith come out and actually be dominating here and at Illinois. But, uh, yeah, it's just hard to say with so little uh, or so little of a track record. Going up to 33, we got a marquee matchup. We got Roman Bravo Young versus Sebastian Rivera. Uh, Rivera um, did injury default out of the Midlands Championship. Um, so I'm not 100% positive. He opened up with a, I think it was a, a loss, right, to Seth Gross. Is that right? Um, and then you know, had a nice run, and then injury injury defaulted to Piotrowski uh, from Illinois. So I'm not sure he'll be in the lineup. You got to think that Northwestern wants him in the lineup for this match. But you know, the real deal for for Rivera is March. Um, talked a little bit already about Roman Bravo Young in the Illinois preview. You know, he cleaned house at the uh, Wilkes Open. Um, he had a you know, bonus point win over Ferrante at Penn. Um, had a really close match with Jarrett Lane. Didn't Lane um, doesn't look the part of a thirty-three pounder, but seemed to prevent prevent uh, Roman Bravo Young from getting to some, to some of his attacks. So um, yeah, he hasn't quite looked the same as uh, in previous years. In the Arizona State match versus Kramer, that was a close match, seven six, I think, and. RBY didn't get to a ton of attacks on that. Last year at this time, Young was kind of wide open. Again, I don't know if it's a training cycle or, you know, there are there are rumors of, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for, boys enjoying their, uh, their college life floating around out there. I'm, I, I got to go with Rivera until I see Young win this match. Um, I think Young has a style to beat Rivera. Uh, if Rivera is in the lineup, if Rivera is out of the lineup, they throw a backup in there. 
Um, you know, I'm going to go with Young, RBY on that one. But Rivera is, I think, a tiny bit quicker than Young. And that's going to make a big difference. One, getting to attacks, and two, finishing. So a slight edge to Rivera. And this could easily be a preview of a quarter or a semifinal uh, in, where is it, Minneapolis in March. Looking forward to that one. Going up to 141. We got a uh, Nick Lee from Penn State coming in, top five guy versus Alex McKenna. Uh, Lee is one of the Penn State guys who is um, performing at the same level, I think, that uh, he was last year. He's got the same kind of offensive output going on, and you know Penn State is going to need bonus points here. I don't think that uh, McKenna has the skills to stay with him. McKenna. Lost um, to Zap, Fit Midlands, um, and then Profaci. And neither of those guys are really in Lee's uh, league as far as uh, you know offensive attacks. Nick Lee has got some great stuff. Lee uh, majored uh, Zap in the la- in Penn State's last duel. Um, I think it was fifteen to five, but don't hold me to that. Uh, so I think Penn State's going to need bonus points here, and I think Lee will get them uh, on the board possibly here uh, with a major or a tech. I'm, I'm sure the coaches would love to see a five-point win, a tech fall, um, and it just depends how good McKenna is at blocking. I think I think Lee can get to the tech fall. Uh, so, you know, I'm taking Nick Lee there. Uh, they did. They did wrestle last year. I think uh, it was a major decision for Lee um, in the duel. Going up to 149, uh, we have Yaya Thomas coming in around 25 to 30 for Illinois, and Jared Verclearen coming in around 35 to 40 for Penn State. Uh, you know, this is a tough match. Verclearen has not produced the offense or initiated the offense. He's going to need to be a real threat at the Division I level um, to score points uh, come March. And I've always liked his mental game. I've seen a little bit of chinks in it this year, especially in the the loss to the Lehigh uh, kid, Hoffman. I think that was just kind of a tactical error that he made. Um, at the Midlands, Thomas went to one and two. <coughs> Excuse me. And didn't really look like a world beater. He lost to guys who were, you know, the 66th ranked wrestler in the country, Graham Rooks from Indiana. So it tells me that if Verclearen's weight descent is good and he is taking care of his nutrition and his health, you know, he can beat the guy who's slightly higher ranked here. Um, We watched... uh, Verclearen, if you were paying attention, he had a pretty good run at the Wilkes tournament. I think he had all bonus wins. Um, You know, coming back from that Lehigh loss, he did not wrestle in the pen match. So we'll see if it's Verclearen or Luke Gardner. Um, I'm guessing it's Verclearen, but we will see. Either way, I'm taking the Penn State wrestler. I think that Thomas has been a little bit inconsistent and might not be ready for, uh, I don't know, what the uh, some of the bigger moves uh, going that Verclearing can put out there. Gardner might be a closer match, um, and they could both be close matches if Verclearing can't take them feet to back. Going up to 57, this is another marquee matchup, uh, tough matchup. We got Ryan Deacon coming in for uh, Northwestern. Deacon is... Uh, eight no on the season. We haven't seen him since the Cliff Keen, uh, you know, in early December. So we'll see, uh, you know, what his health is like there versus Brady Berge. Maybe Brady Berge, as I mentioned in the Illinois preview. We've only seen Berge wrestle the Lehigh match this year, and that's the only match he's had since coming back from that head injury. Uh, at, I think it was at U 23s. So we will see if either of these guys are wrestling. I hope they are. Like I said, Deacon missed Midlands. Berge didn't go to the Wilkes or anything else. Uh, if we do see backups, it could be Bo Pfeiffer versus uh, Shane Oyster. 
maybe I don't know. There's no one else listed on the uh, on the uh, Northwestern lineup or their roster. It could be Hoffman or Yang or uh, Chumbley. So in any of those cases, if it is the backup, I'm taking Penn State. Pfeiffer brings it. Um, he doesn't have the skill to be competitive, I don't think, with Deacon. But I do think that he has the skill to um, go with any of the Northwestern backups. So I'm hoping that we see Deacon healthy and Berge, and we get to see that kind of matchup and see where these guys are at. I did mention that you know, during the Lehigh match, it was pretty obvious they were paying extra attention to Berge during the warm-up and post-match just to see how he would respond to the entire thing. Um, you know, head injuries are no small deal these days, and I personally know s at least a couple of D1 wrestlers whose careers were cut short because they came back too soon. Um, so, and I'm not sure what Deacons, you know, if he has an injury, but um, we will see, I guess, this Sunday. Going up to six, so there's too many variables there. If it is Brady versus Deacon, I'm taking Deacon just because I think he can create more offense for himself. Berge has not shown a propensity to take a ton of shots and a ton of attacks, um, you know, and having so little uh, track record this year. You know, he beat uh, uh, Humphreys from Lehigh 5-3. to three. Humphreys is a good wrestler, so we know Berge can be there, but um, just the offensive output and the cardio and with the questions coming back, I know Penn State would probably want to hold him out um, just, if there's any doubt, just to make sure they're getting points here come March if they have any hope of uh, competing for first place. Bumping up to 65, we got Shane Oster from Northwestern uh, versus Vincenzo Joseph. Um, you know, in common opponents here, you know, they've never faced each other. Joseph has a clear advantage. Joseph has not had... Uh, the standout season, uh, at least compared to last year and the two years before. You know, he's a senior. Um, you know, word is that he's enjoying his senior year. And, uh, you know, we will see where he is at. He's only wrestled four duels. Uh, he's undefeated. You know, he did compete at the, uh, the Open. Uh, lost to Nolf, who came up looking a little gimpy there. Um, so, uh, you know, Joseph comes in at number one for Penn State to, to be competitive in this match. Uh, I think that they, they need at least a major here. And a major, we have not seen Joseph racking up bonus points. Last year, he was able to rack up bonus points um, against anybody who was not in the top five. And this year... You know, he, I thought he was going to open it up a little more against Shields in the Arizona State match and Meyer from Lehigh. Those were three point wins. Again, I don't know what the training cycle was like. I don't know uh, if they were just pushing the heck out of the boys, getting them ready for the freestyle uh, part of the, the competition for the guys looking to qualify for the Olympic team or Olympic trials. Or if there's just something else going on with Joseph, he may be nicked up. Don't know. I think a major decision is a push, you know, a tech or a pin is a win for Penn State, and a regular decision is a win or emotional win for Northwestern or a tactical win. Bumping up to 74, Tyler Moreland for Northwestern versus number one Mark Hall, Moreland, you know, mid-30s ranked. I can't find any record of them wrestling each other. Common opponents show Hall, um, should easily dominate this match, as easy as it is to dominate a D1 opponent who's quality. Um, Moreland did wrestle at Midlands, and he went 3-3, three and three, I believe, 4-3. and three. Um, Doesn't have any wins over anybody in the top, uh, top 20. Does have a win over the guy from North Carolina, Clay Lout, 8-4. Uh, and um, Hall, you know, had a you know he is <clears throat> undefeated on the season, and he uh, his closest his only non bonus point win was versus Jordan Cutler seven to two in that duel. Everything else has been bonus points. And again, you got to figure a push for Penn State is a major decision, a tech or a pin. Um, 
is a win and a regular decision is you know a tactical win for Northwestern in this match it, it yeah so I'm taking Hall with a pin I think he's gonna get something from neutral and we haven't seen him do a bunch of that neutral stuff this year um, gator rolls and cements but I think Penn State is going to be needing bonus and I think he's gonna provide it you know, Hall is a savvy wrestler, and he's a senior, and I think he wants to push that bonus point, um, you know, percentage higher and be in real contention for the Hodge, go out on a, a real high note for his career. Then bumping up to 84, um, we got Aaron Brooks coming in for Penn State, who, you know, has a short record of work here, so... I don't know if he's really in the rankings at this point, but I, I would say he's probably around my number 10 guy in the country. He's got a ton of experience at the, uh, you know, on the freestyle circuit. So he is, he's been around, even though it's tre technically his freshman year. He took a gray shirt um, last year, and they pulled him this year, put him in, and he... Uh, you know, had a regular decision win over Weiler, Chris Weiler at Lehigh. Um, you know, it was undefeated at the Madtown Open. And then one versus the, the Penn wrestler with a tech fall. So I think he's got a good motor. Again, this is going to be, I think Penn State is going to need bonus points. Jack Jensen comes in ranked around number 50. He's 11 and 8 on the season. He was 4 and 2 at Midlands. Um, He's lost close matches here. So, you know, he is, <clears throat> he kept Cash Wilkie uh, to a 3 2 decision. And, you know, the, he did lose the match before that to the number 18 guy, uh, Andrew Morgan from Campbell, 11 to 3. So it's a tale of two matches here. Was he blocking completely versus Wilkie? Was Wilkie nicked up at Midlands? I don't know. Wilkie came in at number 11. And just squeak by three to two, but the at the end of a tough tournament, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get mentally and physically from the guys. Um, so again, a regular decision to me is, you know, is a tactical win for Northwestern, and a major decision I think is a is a win for Penn State. Brooks being a freshman, I, I think it's too much to ask for anything more than that. Uh, that major decision. So I'm taking Brooks. I think that we're going to see him get to a major. He's just so slick on his feet. He has showed the ability to perform well on the mat. I did not see him struggle with Weiler. Uh, I think Weiler had one or two funky roles that he couldn't follow. And Weiler is a good mat wrestler. Um, so I'm, I'm taking Brooks and I'm, I'm going with the major. 97, you know, this is, you know, I don't know at what Penn State is doing here. Um, you know, they've been wrestling Kyle Cannell uh, versus, and he's he would be wrestling Lucas Davidson, who comes in around number 20. Um, they haven't faced each other. Based on common opponents, uh, it looks like Davidson is going to be slightly better than Connell. And... You got to wonder if we're going to see Rashid here or if they're going to make any other adjustments. Um, you know, Rashid, you know, the word is he lost the wrestle off to Brooks and he's going up. Um, you know, I don't know if he's 100% recovered. You know, this, they say an ACL is six months at best. And, you know, I don't know if he actually wrestled Brooks off. It wouldn't make sense to hold uh, Rashid out all this time uh, to protect him for March and have him wrestling Brooks in the room. Um, so I don't know. You hear all sorts of things. Uh, this is, if it is Connell, I don't think he's going to win. He has showed me nothing this year as far as um, being able to, to perform the way he did, you know, two years ago at Kent State. Uh, you know, he has been beaten by guys who are unranked uh, this season or, you know, out of the top 30 and uh, had close matches with guys of the Penn guy, he lost, who was number 50, I believe. He won by a point, uh, lost to Jake Jacobson, 
lost to Cordell Norfleet, who was now around number 15 in the rankings, 15 to 20. Kate Jacobson's around 15 to 20. The Norfleet match wasn't even close. So as I'm looking at it, I just think Davidson has got an edge here. Now his record doesn't show it. He's only six and four, and this is going to be a you know a, a tough match. But I just haven't seen the fight in Canel. Uh, so I got it as a toss up, I guess, in my mind. But I think the edge is slightly with Davidson. Uh, Penn State needs this match, and if it's Connell, you know, I don't know if that means they are holding Rashid out or if they're and kind of pushing on the year. I think the next weight class is going to determine that. You know, whatever they decide for this road trip to do at 285 is really going to be how they are proceeding with the season. You know, everybody's saying that Kassar is out for the year, and I love me some Anthony Kassar. I think he's so much fun to watch. A personable guy off the mat. I love the rivalry with him and Steveson. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like Steveson. He's a heck of a wrestler. But the, the, the matches that Kassar won with him, talk about mental, mental preparation and follow-through. So that is just toughness of a really good game plan. And, uh, you know, it's a shame if he's out for the season. That said, you know, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, Austin Hoops going in. I, I, you know, if Penn State puts hoops in, I think they're kind of checking out on the season here. They got to pull Neville's red shirt, um, you know, and this would be a tough, uh, a tough uh, road trip for him to come out of red shirt. Um, he has he's undefeated in just a little bit of wrestling this year. He uh, was at the Matt Town Open undefeated, and then at Wilkes Open, and he didn't beat anybody of any notoriety. I'm sure the kids, the boys, the young men he's wrestling in the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club and in the Penn State room are much better. So the, the Penn State staff will have um, you know, an idea of what to expect from Seth. He's going up against number 140, Jack Hayob. I think he's uh, Joe's brother out of Ohio. You know, He is coming in... Um, you know, with an 0-5 record as a redshirt freshman. So I, I, mean, I think Nevels can beat him. I just don't know that Hoops can beat him. Um, you know, Hoops just just doesn't have any of the, uh, you know, he's 5-6. and six And, you know, losing matches to guys who are ranked in the, at 100 at the Wilkes Open does not make it look like he's going to be competitive. So uh, to me... This, whoever we see at 285 is, you know, letting us know what the the staff at Penn State is thinking for the rest of the season. I'm hoping we see Seth Nevels. I hope that Nevels is ready to go and that he's not nicked up. You never know what's going on there. But he, like I said, we did see him at the, uh, um, the Wilkes Open, and he was 3-0 and with a technical fall, a fall, and then a decision. Um, you know, the regular decision was over uh, Josh Walls from Millersville, who I I know is a reasonable heavyweight for D2, but I'm not sure that he is really a, a D1 caliber measuring stick. So if they do pull, pull Nevels, I'm taking Penn State in a nail-biter 20 to 17. If they don't pull Nevels, I, I got to go. I got to say it's probably going to be Northwestern unless – Meredith wins that toss-up match, and um, either RBY or uh, Brady Berge win their match. So it's going to be a fun match to watch, and uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon.